During the late 1980s, an old school friend, Dean, recalls an experience that shook his mother to the core and caused her to leave her cleaning job on the day it happened. Dean was around seven years old at the time, and his mom, Sue, was a cleaner. She worked at various large houses around Solihull. On this particular occasion, it was the summer holidays, and she had taken her son to work with her. It was a relatively new cleaning job at a large house in the Solihull countryside. She'd only been given this new property recently by the cleaning agency, as no other cleaners seemed to stay there for very long. She'd been there a couple of times before, and thought it was a little far away, and this might have been the reason the other cleaners did not stay. The house was a large rural property with three floors. The third floor was within the roof of the house and contained two bedrooms and a children's nursery which had large dormer windows in which was perfect to safely leave Dean to play for a while whilst she went around her cleaning duties. The owners of the property were a middle-aged couple who commuted into London daily and as so were rarely around during the cleaning. Sue recalls it had been a pleasant midsummer's day as she used her keys to unlock the large oak door before entering the property, which had been secure and empty at the time. She deactivated the alarm system and went around her cleaning tasks. This usually started with walking through to the back of the house and through the back door in order to bring in the washing from the back garden. Dean had continued up the two flights of stairs to the nursery, which was packed with children's toys belonging to the owner's children who spent most of their time at a relative's house during the school holidays, whilst their parents worked. As Sue folded the clean washing into a basket, she glanced up at Dean through the large dormer window and could see that he had already found toy planes which he was holding up, squishing them through the air. She continued her way through her daily duties, working her way from room to room. Occasionally, she checked in on him to ensure he was okay. She also took him some lunch about halfway through her shift, which would last a couple of hours or so. After lunch, and as her shift was drawing to an end, she was taking the rubbish she had bagged up out to the bins, which were situated to the side of the house. As she walked across the large rear patio area, she again glanced up towards the nursery and saw Dean stood at the window. She waved at her son as he waved back. At that moment, Sue's attention moved to an anomaly which felt out of place in the corner of her eye. Her attention had been drawn to the dormer window of the upper bedroom, which was immediately next door to the nursery. Sue felt a wave of coldness sweep over her as she found herself looking into the sunken eyes of a grey-faced old man staring at her from the bedroom window. The stare lasted several seconds before the old man's head turned to look in the direction of the nursery where Dean was playing. The old man then turned his head back towards Sue with what she described as an evil grin. Sue immediately dropped the bag of rubbish and ran into the house. She flew up the two flights of stairs and retrieved Dean from the nursery, who was oblivious to the threat and seemed confused as to why his mum was acting so erratic. Sue recalls that on the way out of the house, she noticed a freezing cold feeling that she seemed to run through as she passed the open door of the bedroom where the old man had been seen. Of course, there was no sign of the old man, and Sue ran out of the house, dragging Dean behind her to her car. She never returned again. Funnily enough, the owners of the house never questioned why.